Drill collars are extra heavy metal tubes about 30 feet in length. They are used to add weight and stiffness to the lower end of a rotary drilling assembly. As shown here, most drill collars are round. They are precision bored to a specific diameter and usually threaded with a pin on one end and a mating box on the other. But square-shaped collars are sometimes used. And some collars are spiral designed to lessen the tendency to stick in the well. Drill collars are used primarily to put weight on the bit and put tension in the drill pipe. The neutral point is usually set to be slightly below the transition between the drill pipe and collars, say two or three collars below. The string above the neutral point is in tension and the string below the neutral point is in compression. The neutral point is raised or lowered by adjusting the hook load with the draw works. If there are too few drill collars in the bottom hole assembly, the weight of the drill string may produce a pushing force, that is to say, compression. This will cause the drill pipe string to bend. Drill pipe rotated under compression wears faster where it contacts the sides of the hole. Also, rotation under such conditions causes one side of the drill pipe to be put first in tension then alternately in compression. Drill pipe joints are stiffer than the drill pipe tube. Therefore, maximum bending occurs in the drill pipe tube. However, in a drill collar, the situation is reversed. The joint is more flexible than the collar itself. Therefore, maximum bending occurs at connections in the collar string. These strains on the threaded portion of drill collars are like those on a piece of wire that is notched then bent back and forth over and over. At the point where the wire is notched, bending stresses are concentrated. Opposite sides of the wire are compressed, then put in tension with each bending movement. Bending causes a condition called metal fatigue, which ultimately results in failure. The stress concentrating notch need not always be a thread. Notches on other parts of the drill collar can accidentally occur, usually by poor handling or operational practices. If joined or made up correctly, the drill collar string is like a long wire without notches. The threaded connections, or tool joints, have been designed so that there will be no point that would act to cause overstress and later failure. A properly tightened joint spreads the makeup compression strains over both threads and shoulders of the pin and the box. The tightened joint acts as one piece of metal, not as a series of V notches that may develop early failures. Knowing something about joint design will help you understand how to take care of drill collars. First, if the bottom of the thread, the thread root, is sharp, as in the top drawing, it could act like a notch. So, drill collar joints, as in the bottom two drawings, have broad crests and roots with rounded corners. Properly prepared drill collar threads are rolled or given a work hardening treatment to strengthen the metal surfaces at the thread roots. Thus, to lessen the notch failure possibility. After cold rolling, the metal fibers in the root of the thread are compressed, which increases the fatigue life of the metal in this area. Two other possible places for the notch effect are at the base of the box and the base of the pin. If threads were cut, as in A, some threads in the box and pin will not be engaged. These unengaged threads could act like notches. In B, the unengaged threads are cut away to avoid the notch effect of the unengaged threads. The joint at C is designed to leave a little more metal in the wall by not having metal removed below the level of the thread root as it is in B.
with the notch effect removed, stresses spread around the surface of the metal, so it is not concentrated at one point. These are called stress-relieving grooves. In the search for stronger joints, the industry has developed many thread designs. This is why care must be taken in matching, using, and repairing threads. A device called a joint identifier helps in finding out what a joint is. Here is three and a half threads per inch, H90 type thread, made with two inches of taper per foot. Such things as diameter, threads per inch, shape of threads, and taper of the joint must be considered to identify a threaded joint. Thread taper is usually expressed as so many inches reduction of diameter per foot of length. Joint strength also depends on the relative strengths of its pin, box, and shoulders. The size of a connection on a drill collar is different from the outside diameter of the collar. In fact, the same size connection may be used with several different outside diameter collars within a limited range. It is also possible to vary the bores of drill collars so that with the same outside diameters, they will have different inside diameters. The shapes of the threaded part of the joint can also vary. This means there are many possible thicknesses and strengths of metal to resist drilling forces. In a joint, there are two places where strength is critical. One is in the pin near its base. The other is at the bottom of the box where the threads run out. With four things that can vary, it is possible for either the pin or the box to be stronger. In good design, the bending strength of the box has to be about two and a half times stronger than the pin at the critical points. When the bending strength ratio is two and a half to one, this is known as a balanced connection. Engineers have developed charts that help pick the best combinations of connection size and types, outside diameter and inside diameter. The shaded areas on the charts show the range of outside diameter and inside diameter to maintain a balanced connection of a certain size. For example, a seven inch outside diameter collar with a two and a quarter inch bore falls in the shaded area shown for a four and a half internal flush connection. This connection would be balanced for this outside diameter and inside diameter. If the outside diameter were to wear to six and a half inches with a two and a quarter inch inside diameter, the joint would be pin strong using a four and a half internal flush connection. Therefore, the box would eventually fail first. This joint should be recut to a four internal flush to maintain balance of pin and box. The number of drill collars used may vary greatly. Many years ago, two to five were thought to be enough. Now, 18 to 20 drill collars in a drill string assembly are common. In many instances, large diameter collars, which of course are heavier, will make it possible to use fewer collars in the bottom hole assembly for the same amount of total weight. Two, large collars don't bend as easily. These things have an effect on the number and size of drill collars, formation hardness, hole diameter, tendency of the hole to deviate, and so forth. Hard formations usually require heavier drilling weight. Thus, more drill collars are required than would be needed where soft formations are being drilled. Hole diameter is significant because drilling weight is chosen according to so many thousands of pounds per inch of hole diameter. Large diameter holes will therefore require more drill collars than small diameter holes. Where the hole will tend to deviate from vertical, it is desirable to run a packed hole assembly to limit hole deviation. 
For instance, this packed hole assembly consists of extremely large drill collars, a stabilizer, a near hole size square drill collar, a bottom hole reamer, and a bit. When stabilizers are used in a packed hole assembly, they should be connected by drill collars with an outside diameter as large as practical to maintain stiffness, but not restrict mud circulation. Generally, though, more drill collars are used than are needed to put the desired weight on the bit. For example, if 50,000 pounds weight is used on the bit when drilling, then that much weight should be provided by the drill collars, plus a reserve to offset the flotation effect in the drilling mud and reasonable excess to ensure that the drill pipe is always in tension. No weight should be supplied by the drill pipe. Remember what compression does to pipe. When new, the weight of each collar can be obtained from tables supplied by manufacturers. This table shows that for a particular drill collar, six and three quarters inches in diameter, with a bore of two and a half inches, the weight is 105 pounds per foot. That comes to 3,150 pounds for a 30-foot length. But drill collars weigh less as they are used and metal is worn away. Hard, abrasive formations may do this type of damage in a relatively short time. Also, drill collars weigh less when in the hole due to the buoyancy effect of mud. In other words, part of the drill collar weight is floated. Drill collars that weigh 60,000 pounds suspended in air will weigh less than 50,000 pounds when submerged in 12 pounds per gallon mud. In this instance, a correction factor of 0.82 is applied to arrive at the correct weight. But no matter how well a joint is designed and how well the box and pin strengths are balanced, its life depends largely on the treatment it receives on the job. A rig crew can do three basic things to care for drill collars. Number one, avoid any damage to threads or shoulders. Number two, make up connections right. And number three, inspect and repair small damages before they become big troubles. Rule number one is to avoid any damage to shoulders and threads small damages can soon develop into big trouble. Collars can be damaged before they drill a foot of hole. On a truck, on the pipe rack, or on the rig floor, damages like this can and do happen. This is the end result of a shoulder damage and drilling with the joint slightly loose. Even small scratches cause big problems because the shoulder is the only thing that seals against fluid loss. Good care begins when collars are being hauled to the rig. When being moved, they should have thread protectors to prevent damage. Layers of drill collars should be separated. Wood strips or wire rope can do that job. Tie downs should be placed to bind the collars against the spacers, taking care to tie down the collars where supported by the spacers to avoid bending. Once on the rack, drill collars are moved with special care. This is a different kind of thread protector. It has a bale or handle to help in moving. There should be nothing on the ramp or walkway which might strike pipe or collars being moved. A rule to remember, keep ramps and other places clear. New collars may need attention before they go in the hole. A new pin or box may have to be cleaned by removing the dope, a greasy-like rust preventive with a bristle brush and solvent. Rust preventive is not the proper thread lubricant. However, some collars have a black plating or anti-galling compound on the threads, and this should not be removed. 
Therefore, do not use wire brushes to clean the pin or box. After wiping dry, the threads and shoulders are inspected. Damages have to be fixed before the collar is mated with anything else. Damaged threads and shoulders transfer damage from one collar to another. When the threads and shoulders are okay, they are lubricated all over. Don't trust to globs of lube being spread by collars being screwed together. Cover every inch of surface of the threads and shoulder. And be certain to use a good grade of thread lubricant, one with metallic lead or zinc as a base. Be careful of the new Teflon lubricants because they are extra slick and the collars can be easily over torqued. As an extra precaution against galling, the following steps should be taken in the initial makeup of new drill collars. Number one, a new joint should be very carefully lubricated. Any metal to metal contact may cause a gall. Application should be generous on threads in pin relief grooves and especially the shoulders. Number two, good rig practice is to walk in the drill collar joint using chain tongs. Number three, make up to proper torque. Number four, break out connection and inspect for minor damage. Number five, re-lubricate. And number six, make up to proper torque. Each drill collar joint is connected and disconnected many times during its life. Bad practices when making up or breaking out threaded connections can cause serious trouble. Remember three rules when making up. Stab with care. Do not spin up too fast and tighten the joint exactly right with a steady pull. One drill collar weighs several thousand pounds, and a 90-foot stand of drill collars can weigh 10,000 pounds or more. That much weight can cause trouble if it gets even a little bit out of control. Wait until the swinging collar settles down before stabbing. Then guide the pin into the box carefully to protect threads and shoulders. A pin set down on the shoulder of a box could make an indentation on the shoulder of the box that would prevent the shoulders from sealing, causing a washout. Inspect the shoulders any time a missed stab is made and make any repairs with a proper size shoulder file, being sure that loose metal particles are removed afterward. The second rule is not to spin up the joint too fast. Drill collar threads can be galled or burned. Common rig practice is to spin in with a chain or a rotary table. However, the correct practice is to walk the collars in with chain tongs. The third rule, to tighten exactly right, is the hardest to follow. But a lot of help has been developed by the oil industry after much experience. This is why tightness is so important. On a new joint, threads fit tightly, but there is space through which mud can flow. The shoulders fit tightly to keep mud from squirting out, and the fit must be tight enough so that the shoulders will not separate when the collars are bent, as when under load, or when being whipped around in the hole, or when going through a crooked place in the hole. Tightness of a joint is measured in foot-pounds of torque. Torque is a force which makes something turn. One foot-pound torque is a one-pound pull on a lever arm one foot long. As shown here, a 3,000-pound pull on a four-foot lever arm creates 12,000 foot-pounds of torque. Note the pulling force must be at right angles to the torque arm. No matter what type of tong measuring device is used, remember this, 
the pull of the line has to be at right angles to the lever arm. Any other angle will change the effect of the lever arm on foot pounds. Instead of four feet times 3,000 pounds, you may have three feet times 3,000 pounds. Thus, only 9,000 foot pounds of torque instead of 12,000 foot pounds as the first case. There are devices to help prevent making up either too loosely or too tight. This is a hydraulic tong torque gauge. It has a hydraulic cylinder and a pressure gauge, which is marked so line pull can be read in pounds. This gauge can be calibrated to show foot pounds. If the length of the tong arm is known and the tong situated so there is a 90 degree pull in relation to the arm. How much torque is enough? Manufacturers and API provide tables such as this with three steps to be followed. Step one is to find the lines for the connection size and type. This example shows a four and a half H90. Step two is to find the one line for the box outside dimension. In this example, we show a six and a quarter outside diameter. Step three is to find the columns that give the same inside diameter as the pin. This example shows two and a quarter ID. Dropping down the two and a quarter ID column and opposite your six and a quarter OD, you will find that your makeup torque will be 28,500 foot-pounds. The torque used to tighten a collar joint is measured in thousands of foot-pounds. Recommended torque may be only 2,000 foot-pounds for a small joint, or as much as 90,000 foot-pounds for large drill collars. Makeup tongs have a lever arm of only a few feet, so the pull on the tong makeup line can be only 650 pounds for smaller collars and up to 30,000 pounds for larger ones. This is a cam type torque indicator. It has a special feature. The desired pounds reading is preset. Then, when the right torque is reached, a loud pop noise lets the driller know. A lifting sub is used to make handling drill collars easier and safer. But three things need to be remembered about drill collar subs. They must have the right threads to mate. They have to be made up properly. Their threads also have to be kept in good condition to prevent thread damage from being transferred to the drill collar on which it will be installed. When the drill string comes out of the hole, it can be watched for damage. Drill collar joints should be taken apart at different places each second to third time. This gives every joint a chance to be looked at. When a joint is hard to break out, it may have been made up too loose. When a joint is made up too loose, the shoulders alternately separate and close up under bending loads as they rotate so that the lubricant is worked out and the shoulders become dry. When breakout torque is applied, the high friction between the dry, heavily loaded shoulders generates so much heat that the surfaces are welded together. When these welds are broken, galls are left on the shoulders, as shown in this example. Made up correctly, shoulders will be bright and shiny with scratches like a phonograph record. Made up incorrectly, damages will occur. A loose joint can wobble so that the shoulders become either crowned, as indicated by the bright spot on this shoulder, or cupped. Both lead to disastrous results to either box or pin. A crown is a high point, like on a hill. A cup is a low point like in a valley. Either one can transfer similar damage to other joints if not fixed. Washed threads also result from loose joints. Washing is created by the erosion of the high-pressure mud stream 
wearing down the sides of the threads as it follows the thread course and exits at the shoulder. Worse things still can happen if allowed to continue. High pressure drilling mud will erode away a portion of the threads entirely and start eating away at the body of the box. You'd be lucky to trip this one out of the hole. And in this case, there was no washout, but looseness caused metal fatigue and the joint actually parted. Such failure is most likely to happen in the thread root of the first fully engaged thread near the base of the pin or box. Although operating a joint loose causes most problems, failures can also result from too much torque. The box can be pushed out to look like a bell. The pin can be pulled off or stretched. This example is likely to occur down hole when torque increases and the shoulder on the box or pin is rounded, or when the walls of either are worn thin. Drill collars can become bent. Because of its unstable downhole action, a bent drill collar can cause damage to other parts of the string if run back into the hole. It should be laid down and straightened. No metal, no matter how well it is taken care of, will last forever under the stresses it is put to drilling down hole. Wear is inevitable. Nicks and scratches will appear on surfaces. Threads, no matter how well designed, are still subject to minute stresses at marks left by the thread cutting tool at the plant. Chemical action takes place on the body as well as threads to develop pits or cause grain separation. All these problems and others are usually hard to see. If left undetected, they can develop into a serious situation. Minute cracks and pits are not prevalent on the outside surface of the drill collar because they are polished off while working against the sides of the hole but the threads and bore of the collar are not subject to this polishing. Consequently, collars should be routinely inspected depending on the environment in which the collars have been working. There are several types of inspection services available. Magnetic particle inspection is commonly used. An electric coil is used to magnetize the drill collar. The inspector sprays a solution of iron filings and fluorescent material on the threads. The filings are attracted to the magnetized metal, and cracks in the metal, no matter how small, can be observed in the way the iron filings appear on the magnetized metal. After the solution drains away, the filings and the fluorescent material will glow under an ultraviolet black light when viewed in the darkness under a hood. The inspector can then find and mark the cracks. Another type of damage is a fin worn on a shoulder. This happens when the shoulders of the pin and the box are of different sizes. Fins on shoulders are corrected by grinding a bevel on the shoulders. Shoulders can be reground flat using files. A number of rules and precautions have to be remembered in hand filing. First, place a straight edge across the box shoulder to find the high spot. The file must be used parallel to the shoulder of the box and across opposite edges of the shoulder. Only high spots should be filed and do not remove too much metal. After the shoulder has been touched up all the way around, it should make a good sealing surface. Check it for flatness all the way around by using the straight edge in several directions. Watch for low spots.
shoulders can be ground by either special tools or by hand. This is a shoulder refacing tool. It is solidly attached to the pin or box. Then a power tool drives the plate which holds an abrasive material. The plate is flat and lined up right so the refaced shoulder will also be flat. Pin shoulders are harder to do, but the same procedures and rules apply. Incidentally, notice how this collar was damaged by being struck by the pin of another collar on the pipe rack. Check for flatness afterwards and look for high spots or radial gouges. Threads may also be repaired by use of the power grinder, which is the proper procedure. In an emergency, a triangular file may be used. It removes metal from high spots. When the job is complete, a thread profile gauge is used to check the repair. Care must be taken not to damage the root of the thread with the corner of the file. Some damages to drill collars are so bad that the repair work must be done in a field shop. The rig crew can't do much about these damages now, but it can reduce their number by following a few simple rules. These things prevent the little, then the big damages. Protect threads and shoulders. Avoid mating damaged threads with good threads. Keep threads clean. Lubricate properly. Stab carefully, then spin up slowly. Repair small visible damages. Apply proper makeup torque. And these same rules for good operating procedures apply to bit subs, shock subs, stabilizers, and reamers, which are frequently made up in the drill collar string.